Okay, I have the, um, the doc up here, everyone. Thank you for waiting. I don't know if we're waiting for others to join too. Uh, I think we can get started. So welcome okay. everyone to our Chaos, Diversity and Inclusion work group meeting on February 11. We like to record these and put them on YouTube. So anyone who misses the meeting can catch up or if you want to review something. If you don't want this to be posted publicly, please let us know and we'll take it down. The agenda for today is to review last week's action items. And then I did something new just to try it where for each agenda item, I tied it back to our goals so that we have a track record of addressing what we wanted to do and know what we're working on. The first one is to discuss use cases. The second one is uh, the README that Nicole has worked on. I hope she can join us. Then for releasing metrics, um, I posted to the general main list today that we have a proposal and we need a subdomain uh, for the DNI uh, metrics. So we can talk about this proposal there. And then I'm interested also in how we can move forward the metrics that were advanced during ChaosCon. Any other items anyone would like to talk about today? I see that is not the case. So it's like plenty of stuff to get through. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with uh, last week's action items. Nicole is not here. So I assume the contributing MD is postponed until we have the readme. Maybe we should take this off and assign it again. But I don't want to do it without Nicole here. The next one is about the readme structure. This is also the discussed later. So I hope Nicole can join us. What has happened is Nicole posted to the mailing list. Um, and I know we have a few comments in the document, but not too many. So. But we're going to wait for next week, right? The next one is create a new pull request. And we can open this. Don, thank you for reviewing it and making a comment. I just took what you commented and put it as our note. Um, so I don't know if anyone has comments. The note is about the paid versus unpaid contributors. And right now it reads, note that paid versus unpaid contributors can be problematic and nuanced from the perspective of diversity and inclusion. Many people who participate as volunteers are coming at it from a position of privilege because they can afford to spend their free time participating in an open source project instead of working a second job to make ends meet, caring for family members or spending time meeting basic survival needs. In other words, having more volunteer contributors might actually mean that the project is less diverse rather than more diverse. However, in a corporate sponsored project involving volunteer contributors could be a sign that the community is welcoming and inclusive. So that is the proposed note. And what do I'm curious what other people what other people think about that? I feel like yeah. it's a I feel like it's an enormous note, but we've had a lot of discussion around this because the this particular um, dimension of diversity is, um, as said in the note, problematic and a bit nuanced. So we weren't quite sure what to do with it. Does this seem like a reasonable a reasonable solution to that? If so, I can go ahead and, and merge it, but I am curious what other people think. 
So that we'd be asking for the distinction of paid versus unpaid, not just volunteer. Um, well, the idea is, so right now our dimensions, our, our demographics, was it dimensions of demographics? I forget what that was called. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the title. Yeah, doesn't, it does not include anything about paid versus unpaid or um, volunteer. So the I idea, the idea is we'd add a, a paid contributor versus unpaid volunteer contributor section, but then yeah. with this note. Yeah, I, I do think it's an important distinction and it one does give you, but you're right, it, there's sometimes the unpaid actually means a less diverse um, cohort of people that are volunteering. But um, I think there's just interest and curiosity to know what percent or what portion of volunteers are paid versus unpaid anyway, just for reasons of whether it's wanting to know how corporate backed it is or how, I think sometimes there is even the belief that there's so much volunteer effort in open source, but actually there's a lot of paid and corporate backed activity and effort. Mm -hmm. um, so just even more transparency and understanding about the makeup of the volunteers, I think it's helpful from that standpoint too. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I have a comment too. This is Sharon. Um, when we did our uh, original sur diversity survey about a couple of years ago, we actually incorporated something in there around um, paid and unpaid, just to try and capture this, this dimension too. So I'm not sure how well we captured it, but we, we, we saw it as a distinction. So it was something that we thought would be important to capture. So, so yes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to, to echo that, I think it's I think it's incredibly important to to capture, um, and we just want to make sure that people think about um, about how to use it. I guess. Right. Yeah. So I posted in the chat a direct link to where you can see the note that we want to add to make this more nuanced. And if you have any ideas on that note or is that plainly clear yeah and i would say if there are no if people think this seems like a reasonable approach i can go ahead and merge the 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 pull request mm -hmm. We can always we can always change it later. It's the beauty of yeah, beauty of something like this. No, I I think it's reasonable. I think it's clear. Okay. I'd give it a thumbs up too. Perfect. All right. Done. I'll go. I'll go ahead and merge it now. Perfect. Thank you, Don. Yeah. No and thank you for your feedback, everyone. Um, I was hoping Matt was here for the next action item to talk about funding, but he's not, so we'll have to defer until I'm here. Time to oh, really? I appeared. <laughs> I was a little late. Sorry. You summoned him. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of funding for outreachy, not much luck in the last in the last round. I did find out that I think Ford Foundation actually funds outreachy directly. So in terms of individual students, not so much. I think their efforts are more towards funding the program kind of at the core. Okay, that's a bummer, but it's, we'll be okay. What's, what was the, are we looking for more funding options for different individual developers? Is that? Yeah, so for um, outreachy, that's the program. I think it's run through the Software right. Freedom Conservancy. Basically, yeah. you need to bring, I think it's $6,500 forward as an organization to actually fund the student. And so mm -hmm. I was exploring, I was gone last week, kind of exploring a few options amongst other things. Um, and one of the groups that I had talked to actually does more direct funding to the outreachy program as opposed to kind of the individual. And do we have individuals that are 
seeking this immediately or just no, in general? We no, want to know. It was more just in general. No. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the outreach program is like the Google Summer of Code yep. program, but targeting underrepresented exactly, groups, yep. specifically young women. Yep. Yeah, I'm familiar with it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's been so the particularly idea was, successful in the kernel. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, unless we have someone else step up and provide funding, we'll not be involving outreach then. Um, Sorry, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, except that um, I do know what outreachy is. Um, do you guys have a particular project in mind um, for outreachy? What we talked about is that we would like to have um, to, to involve someone who can help us with um, polishing what we have. The use cases that we have uh, need to work on as we are working with more and more projects to implement metrics. We can use someone who can uh, collect that information and write engaging blog posts to spread the news and share what we learn. So there are several ways that I think an outreachy student could help with um, advancing our mission. And just on this note too, um, in probably like mid Q1 or toward the end of Q1, um, there might there's developments with the Linux Foundation that might be able to help with this too. So we can share more of that in the not so distant future. Um. So I'd probably need something a little bit more specific, um, but Red Hat may be able to support, you know, what you're looking for. Um, but I'd probably need some kind of like proposal um, you know, to kind of be able to move forward with it. Okay. Um, that would be awesome. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, no promises, but it's possible. Um, we definitely fund outreach interns in general. Um, and I know we have some stuff earmarked uh, for, you know, the, the call we had the other day. Um, we have some money earmarked for that. I just don't know how much it is. Awesome. So we'll have to put something together. Georg, I can help you with that if you'd like. Yeah. That we could circulate. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, don't go overboard, right? Like I'm talking about like a paragraph or two that just kind of yep. describes what you have in mind. <laughs> Not a seven page proposal. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Although it'll, you know, that'll generate more funding, I'm sure, right? Isn't it the, the height <laughs> of the of the grant proposal? Right. <laughs> Fair enough. So if you write two pages, we get two outreaches. That's what I heard. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Okay, I'm putting us down, Matt, to prepare a description. I'll take lead on it and then send it your way. On the phone. Uh, the next action item was to create a pull request to add contributors to our README. We've done this and it's already merged. We added Sarah Conway as a core contributor because she has been reliably showing up and contributing over the last three months and we added someone who created a pull request as a contributor. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, you wanted to create a pull request um, to add the contributors from the ChaosCon workshop? Oh, you mean for the... Um... Uh, for the people that participated in the Google Docs and on, right? Yes. Or so you, you meant something? Oh, yeah. As contributors. Yes, yeah, happy to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's still open. Any other thoughts, comments on last week's action items?
then we can move on to discuss potential new use cases for diversity and inclusion, specifically um, Hyperledger. Um, who, who put this on the agenda? So this was, uh, so we had a meeting, so during the last week meeting, mm -hmm. uh, right from Hyperlayer came to the meeting and he was basically happy about participating and using Hyperlayer as a use case. So I was the one adding this to the agenda. Uh, I think Sarah knows him and I don't know if you have some more information perhaps. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, that was my colleague Rai and I don't know if he's on the call this week, but um, I guess I'd love to know and I can share back with them, like what are the first steps for becoming like a true use case example? And is there something that the Hyperledger project needs to do or is it something that we need to share with them? Sort of, you know, how that would start. So I would say that's a good question. Uh, basically, uh, based on, so the way we are seeing this in, in other documents we have produced is basically using the different focus areas that, uh, that are already defined. And they basically go through, uh, well, go through the several questions and metrics uh, defined there. Uh, an example of this, um, let's say a kind of an old example, is the OpenStack gender report that uh, Nicole and me and other authors uh, help to, to produce. And we are covering small subset of the, all of the focus areas. So uh, my suggestion would be like, we can start with one of the focus areas, the one that we feel that might be the most, uh, I don't know, useful or perhaps easiest. Um, and then go ahead with this. Um, I, I don't know what you think. I mean, you, uh, the rest of you here in the call, but to check if, if this is, if having the data that we want to have, for instance, for governance, what's, what's the purpose of having such data? And double check if this is useful for the board, for instance, for the community people that are part of this, um, and see if this is something that helped the board to make decisions, basically, uh, or to become more inclusive, or to bring more diverse people on board. So. Uh, this is how I see this, but I know more comments, opinions. Danielle, if I um, may, application uh, to make sure I'm understanding. Um, so, so um, you and I and some others had been working to um, understand the level of DNI in the OpenStack community. Hyperledger. Particularly, Sarah, given bringing your colleague uh, into the group, they seem like a community that's very amenable to doing the same kind of work and understanding this, um, the w measuring the level of DNI in their community. So we've we've done a lot of this work in the OpenStack community to date. Um, one of the next communities that we can apply this this work to in these these measurements to is that Danielle what you're suggesting? Yes, that's what I'm suggesting, but with a with a main difference, which is uh, with so, so let's say that with OpenStack we had a set of deadlines that, that was more. Um, a common interest in understanding diversity and inclusion in OpenStack with, but with some specific deadlines that we had between well, the two companies and so on. So we had some, let's say, commercial branch here that we have to deal with. If we go with for Hyperlayer, uh, this is a community work. So as I, I know how much effort we can deliver if it's asked for, uh, for, for the use case and so on, unless there's some sponsorship involved from somewhere. Uh, this is some, some work that we have to do all together. 
perhaps, and having a per layer as use case. So then my suggestion was basically to start small and, with, and to start with one of the uh, focus areas and then check if the focus area is currently being useful for the community and for the world and for us as a, as a working group and so on. But that was basically my suggestion. So basically, so start small. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say uh, exactly that many times. Okay. Okay. If, if that makes sense, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. So the work. Um, yeah. So we did have some deadlines in place for the work that we were doing in the OpenStack community, and the settings were around initially were around the OpenStack summits that happen twice a year, mm -hmm. um, which also coincide with the OpenStack releases. Um, and, and then it also became that because we, we were writing blogs um, around the work, uh, we were also uh, speaking on uh, panel discussions and sessions about the results of the work. So to apply to, you know, there might be some um, events specific to the Hyperledger community that you might want to do. Yeah, I know that um, they yeah. had their first global forum last December, and there was a focus and energy on DNI for that event. And then I don't know if they're doing one in 2019, but they are definitely doing a member meeting as well as some technical boot camps, I believe. So it could be that the focus and some of the energy is put into those events to try to moves forward on DNI. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And okay. Awesome. And then Danielle, your um, suggestion was our for the OpenStack community were basically covered by and large the metrics or metric categories that are included in the chaos DNI. And I say by and large, I buy, you know, the majority of them. Danielle, oh, Nicole, can you say again? I think we are, we are, sorry, yeah, sorry for interrupting, but I think we are missing part of the, what you are saying. I don't know if first of you are having the same problem. I am. Yeah, it's, it's cutting off for me too. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I was trying. I was trying Zoom. I was trying my computer this morning rather than my phone. I may go back to my phone. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I, I was just saying that. I, gosh, let me know if you still have trouble. If you can't hear me, um, but I, I was just saying that the OpenStack reports that we were uh, publishing covered the majority of the metrics or metric categories that are included in the chaos DNI work. What Danielle, I think what Danielle <coughs> those categories and work that through so that we're starting with something smaller. Right. right. Um, yep. So, oh, my, oh, go ahead. Yep. I just, I think what I'm hearing, I think it makes a ton of sense is, um, I don't know if you saw in the chat, I just picked out three of the goals from three of the um, focus areas in DNI. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe it's just a thought um, is trying to understand from Hyperledger what right. goals they're trying to accomplish. Um, and I, I think really just using the, the goals as stated in the work that you've all done might be a good starting point your point Daniel then you can have a kind of a lower it's not taking everything all at once but if they really want to understand say DNI within leadership then then that's mm -hmm. that, that's the point of interest so. yeah mm -hmm. and uh, another another way of doing this would be that, that uh, instead of being us the producers of the 
of the report, we are the ones kind of uh, mentoring or, or, or helping to drive this. Because if, if there are people already doing this job in, uh, in the hyperlayer community, then uh, we, 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 we can be kind of the I see. Uh, yeah. drivers here, right? So we, we help them to understand what we are trying to achieve and then we have some common goals. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Good idea. So you're suggesting that we be sort of their mentors or their um, consultants almost? Yeah, yeah, probably the word is consultants. Like, uh, you, you, let, let's imagine we have uh, a couple of people interested in producing this analysis for Hyperlayer. Um, then we can we we help them to 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 understand these are the focus areas, these are the questions, this is the way we are measuring things. We have a couple of examples here, and then how can we do this for Hyperlayer? So perhaps we go through the board list of members in the board and so on. But then they are the ones going to the website and listing the people and having the numbers and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. So what do I, I could try to work um, sort of as liaison back to the Hyperledger team and ask, you know, of the focus areas and the goals that we've put forward, you know, which ones are they maybe wanting to focus on or maybe already investing energy into? Um, and maybe tr to your point, identify two or three to start with versus, you know, the whole, uh, our whole list that we've gone through and, and work it that way and see where they, and then maybe hopefully get right to a future meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, if, if, if some of you are going to the open source leadership summit, yep. I'm really happy to join you. So yep. we can have this. Meeting there. And so. there will be quite a few people from the Hyperledger team there. So that might be a good, uh, point to try to connect and I, I like that idea okay. cool should we put that as we'll try to schedule an in-person would be great okay okay great <laughs> awesome looks like we have uh, two action items. One is to figure out what the Hyperledger project is most interested in. And then the second is to schedule in-person meeting at the leadership summit. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, do you take on these two? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. And can I, for that meeting, um, it sounds like the most, some important people to have at that meeting would be people from the, involved in the project, um, from the Linux Foundation side that are helping run the project, as well as people in the technical community or at the board level. Is that, would that be the right group of people to try to connect and unite? I think so. As well as people from our, you know, the chaos DNI working group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I, I should be at the leadership summit as well. So feel free to include me okay. and let me know if you want any help. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other first steps that we can take or is this all we need to do right now? Is there something from the working group out that we can prepare to help with this pilot study? Do we have anything that sort of summarizes, I know it's not the formal chaos working group. Um, I, I, like I, I think the open staff work sort of predates the chaos group, DNI group existing, but things have sort of now been happening in parallel. If I understand it correctly, I'm wondering, do we have a, almost like a little mini case study or use case success around the work we've done with open stack? Would that just be too premature and the timing doesn't really match? Um, well, as, as Nicole mentioned, we, that, that, that report basically covered part of all of the information we want to cover in chaos. So I think it's a good starting point. And um, I would say it's kind of the easy things we can retrieve because we were basically um, uh, going to the website or analyzing developers on these things. While there are other metrics that we want to 
to have in chaos that are more survey based, which are typically more time intensive, perhaps. I don't know. So, yeah, but I would yeah. say it's, it's a good example. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you were doing great. Um, no, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I, I, if you're looking for one piece, like like a like one case study, you know, I'm not sure, Danielle. I'm, what do you think? I'm, I'm not sure that we have that. I think I would point to. I think I would point to the different blogs that were written about the reports. You know, so so basically, typically the way that it would happen is that we release a report. Um, right around the time of the summit, and um, you know, then we would, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, super user, we publish a, a blog through um, super okay. user, and you know, there was one report because the numbers were remaining so consistent over time. We did. Uh, we did it at one point focus on the importance of mentors and mentorship programs. So there was one blog that focused on the more general contributions across uh, code and non-code contrib uh, contributors. And then there was um, a report that focused specifically on the, the importance of mentors and mentorship. Programs. Okay. I, my thought I, on asking that question was even maybe collecting those that report and some of those supporting blogs to share with the Hyperledger team might be useful to share back with them. Yeah, we could we could definitely um, uh, gather that up and sit and, and get that off to you. I, I'm happy to to do that. That's what you were sort of leading to, right, George? Yeah, I just wanted to know if there was something we can prepare ahead of time to make this easier. Oh, cool. And Daniel, um, basically, given the the one, it looks like I'm, I'm clicking through to it, um, but the one on um, we did on the mentors and, and mentorship programs. And the blog clicks through to the report. Okay. Okay. In the interest of time, I would like yep. to move on to the next agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, Nicole, this is yours with uh, README. Oh, okay. Let me go. Um, uh, Post it. I put the link in the document. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Uh, we received um, some feedback from, thank you, Georg, for, um, for your feedback, and then um, from Ben, and then from a few others, I think. Um, so I'm not sure how folks wanted. Uh, to do this, but it would be great. The the overall. Let me start with the overall uh, idea here. Um, was uh, to um, to come up with a structure for the README files across work groups um, that was a bit more consistent. And so um, I, I dove into. Uh, what the uh, the uh, growth maturity and decline work group was proposing for their README file, uh, and basically compared and did a comparison and contrast uh, against what we had in our README file, and essentially came up with um, what you see at. 
I think I put it towards the end. The end of um, page two. Um, so there were some differences. And I brought to the top of the, um, uh, of the uh, doc then what the proposed uh, structure would be and put that out to the mailing list. And folks have come back and provided us with their input. Um, the, um, the idea then would be uh, to, um, to essentially say, okay, here's, here's what we uh, agree on for uh, what our README uh, structure would be, file structure would be, and um, I could then go and, and grab, um, and I guess where it doesn't exist, uh, but I, I think most of this exists in some form or another. Um, it basically, uh, you know, put together the README and the structure that we've agreed upon. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So with that, um, the let's see. So with introduction, um, okay. So we'll include a. I'll just go through the input that we received. If that if that um, makes sense or just. What would you like to get out of today's meeting, Nicole? I'd, I'd like to get out of today's meeting a finalization of the structure so that I can go and, and put together the content um, uh, for, for our new README file so that by the time we get to the Open Source Leadership Summit, we essentially have our new um, README file in place. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works for me. And it would be nice to get the structure kind of set to irrespective of the content necessarily in that structure, because then I can bring that back to the GMD working group as well. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And any sections that we don't have content for right now, we can just uh, yep. not have in the readme. Yeah, the structure would be awesome for me to kind of get out of today. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. So moving through this, then I just wanted to get folks with background and for how we came up with the proposed structure. Um. But uh. Yes. Yeah, so introduction to address um Georg's comments here and Ben's plus one. Um. Yeah. Include a table of contents. Are we all in agreement with that? That seems to yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I can click resolve on that. Perfect, thank you. Okay, background. I'll include an overview in the introduction. Okay, um, and link to the background section further down. My idea is so to I, move this yeah. background section down. And here, if you don't mind, I'm going to move the metrics up. That's what I was thinking, have the metrics up top. So the, the idea here, <clears throat> if I can kind of uh, uh, up level the conversation just a bit. Um, the, the idea here was that we wanted to quickly give folks an idea for what the, what the group is working on and then get them to how do you contribute, right? How, how to, to, in, to invite more contributors to, to dive in. Um, so to, to, to basically give them sufficient information to grok what what we're focused on, and then how do they get involved? So I, I agree that that's important. Um, I think the metrics are a little bit more important uh, for someone who is completely new. I think the 
concern is that for someone that's completely new, having the metrics um, at the very top of the doc doesn't provide any context before they get there. So it could be confusing for people who haven't had, um, haven't spent the time that we have looking at, looking at metrics because they don't know why they're looking at what they, what they're looking at. I think that was the, the argument for putting, putting them a little bit later, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it seems like there's two schools of thought, right? Mm -hmm. Which is how to get involved. Um, and then, which maybe is a use case, I'll just put it that way, right? <laughs> like, right. How, do I, how do I connect and how do I get involved? And then the other is um, folks that are really not maybe looking to get involved, but they just want to know what metrics should I be looking at for my community. I'm not saying one is better than the other. It just appears to be what the conversation is at. That's all. Yeah, I, yeah. Right. Sort of two different audiences almost that we are trying to reach with the same doc and yep. how to order them. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And both yeah. are right. And both are important, but yeah. yeah. And there are some I best practices more. that I think, I think Ben pointed us to some best practices when we first started with that. How does, yeah, he did. How does this align with, that down. with that? Can I put a little bit more in overview here? Like what do we mean by, um, because I agree, you know, for folks who are less familiar with, I mean, we're all been so ingrained in this, you know, purpose, objective, goals, um, you know, how, why are we doing, we have, why, <laughs> um, you know, I think so we lost you, Yeah. So I imagine the overview to state what the purpose is, what our goals are, how we go about doing it, what we produce, and each of those maybe a sentence that then links to the full paragraphs or section below in the document. George, you're suggesting um, like a one a sentence at the top around these different table of contents areas that would give a little quick info and then link down below to read more and go deeper. Yep, so that when you're new to the README, you get a high level idea of what's going on. Right. I like that idea. Okay. And then background. Okay. <clears throat> um, and I kind of imagine that one of these sentences in intro is going to have made is going to key in on what's in the background too but okay uh, and then key focuses let's see what did we say include oh, oh that was in the introduction um, include overview intro and link to background section Okay, I think we did this. I think we can resolve that. Um, okay. Uh, background, okay. Key focuses. Oh, combine with background.
just an idea. How the do order is going to be the same, so don't worry about it for now. Okay. Um, and then, okay. I made a I made a note that I I moved this up in the sequence of compared to where I found it in the growth maturity decline readme file, um, and and Ben commented uh, on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Don. Yeah. Okay. I guess so do you think it should so so I guess the question is um with contributing being down and communication being down at twelve and thirteen, do folks feel like that's where they should fall? That's why I usually expect them in a readme. If I want to look at how to contribute, I usually go to the bottom. And I think it makes sense because if people are if people are new and they haven't contributed yet, having all of the information about what the the goals are, what the use cases are, what the workflow looks like, all of that, having all of that above the contributing section, I think makes a lot of sense because then they can make a decision whether or not they're interested in contributing. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so resolving. Okay. And then, okay, so we've resolved this. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we got that done. Oh, oh um, software, oh, did, did we delete software work, York? I moved it down as one of the types of implementations. This is something gotcha. that we had in our own README. We wanted to talk about how we're implementing the DNI metrics in software, and that's just a sub point of implementations. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh, you make a, a statement about usage and use cases. I can tell you how, just from the content in the GMD workgroup file, how this was being used, right, yeah. It was usage, they're saying how to use this repository and when to release um, metrics, and the, right, um, that piece. Uh, and so, so usage and use cases is, are, are different. Um, so I think we can resolve it. I think that we've, Provided sufficient um, clarification. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. Awesome. I wonder if I hit resolve on this, is it going to delete? I may not. I don't want. I don't want to delete that issue. Or or have it hide that issue. Okay. Okay. Oh, the the one um I think I think we're actually oh great. Okay. Thanks. Um the, I think we're done. Uh, the, um, the, the structure revision, the, the one starting at the bottom here, um, 
is the one for the GMD work group. I just carried it over here so that we could see it. Um, the, the ones that I put in red were ones where I was a little confused because it seemed to be redundant. Um, but I was going to go at, back to Ben and ask about those. I think we incorporate them in our new structure proposal at the top. So, yeah, I, yeah, I feel like yeah. we already addressed all of it. Yeah, yeah. I think we're. I think we're. Um, I think we've. I think we've uh, successfully completed what we wanted to get out of this. So, thank you. Okay. Is is there an action item or a next step, Nicole, or? The next step <laughs> is um, for me to, to uh, go back and to communicate to um, to Ben what we've agreed on for our the structure of the DNI uh, readme file and to start to move content into these different sections. Okay. And I what I also figured out was that I'm. I am um, not able to create a um, a repo, so I can create a pull request. Correct? With this information. Yes, you or can. Or how do you? How should I best do that? Once I get once I get the content moved into these different sections, how how would you like me to proceed? I think a pull request would be great. Then we can talk about it at our next meeting and review the pull requests and then merge it. Okay. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we have three minutes left. I'm going to move determining next week's facilitator note taker up so that we have that taken care of. Uh, who would like to facilitate next week? I think I'm gonna miss the meeting, so I'm not available to, to help out next week. Yeah, I'm, my kids have off that day. There's a school holiday, so I'm hoping to attend, but I don't know that I wanna be leaving. Okay. I can help if needed, although I was last week, so I think I can help. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And I have a situation Let's... similar to Sarah's. <laughs> okay, I can be note taker. Okay, thank you. Um, which one do you want to talk more about in the last two minutes? The chaos con metrics or the release of metrics proposal i kind of don't think we can make progress on either one of those in three minutes <laughs> that's uh, opinion okay okay i'm fine with postponing it then i do while we do have two minutes i want to talk about the proposal then the infrastructure to give you an idea of what this is about the so Toby, Sean, Matt, and I met to discuss how we can release metrics in a way that is more appealing than markdown files in a GitHub repository. The solution we have is to in, have a list of released metrics on our website, similar to what Kate showed us last week at the chaos meeting on Tuesday, um, she pointed us to the SPDX license list. And it's a manual created or manually cu curated list of metrics. And this list then links out to the definitions or to the resource pages. And we have them in our repository and to make them more pleasant and appealing to the eye, we are going to set up GitHub pages 
with a template that will make it look more like our website, but it will be automatically generated. And so from our website, from this list of released metrics, we link to the templated GitHub pages that are created from our markdown files. That is the idea. Mm -hmm. um, is there, so it looks like we're doing subdomains for each of the working groups, like DI, um, looking at the, look at the infrastructure issue. Is there a reason that we're, am I misinterpreting that? Are we planning to do three separate pages, one for GMD, one for metrics, one for DNI? Is there a reason we wouldn't combine them? The reason is that we have one page to link to all of it on the website. And then for maintaining the detail pages, we are right now working in three different repositories hmm. and we wanted to eliminate the need to merge everything back together. So we just released straight out of each repository. Is, sorry, is there, is there then a page that aggregates all of those together? Yes, that is the, the current item metrics page. One where we have the metrics list on the uh, website. Okay, that was my question, whether, um, whether that was just the metrics repository or whether that also includes the GMD and the, mm -hmm. the DNI. So everything is on the slash metrics page. And yes. then we use the, the subdomains to basically give us a place to put all of the metrics from each of the subdomains before they're aggregated up onto the main page. Yes. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay, now that we have that in place, we're out of time and mm -hmm. we can continue talking about this next week. Thank you everyone for participating today. It was a good meeting. We made good progress, so have a good week. Thanks Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, bye-bye.